What's up guys, it's Omar Ron, and we're back with another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the car that's right behind me, the 2007 Pontiac Grand Prix GXP. I'm gonna to explain to you guys what I've done to it for the last four years and what I have future plans for 2023 and beyond. So let's get into it. So you guys don't know what's behind me. This is basically a Pontiac sedan that Pontiac created between the early 2000s. One special thing it has is a V8. It's actually an LS4 V8 that was strictly made for the W body chassis from Pontiac and Chevy and Buick. So I'm gonna explain to you guys some of the backstory and reasons why I picked up this Grand Prix. So basically the first thing is, my first daily was a 2006 Pontiac Grand Prix V6 model of this. And I had it for probably five or six years. I drove it everywhere, it did amazing for me. And I wanted to modify it. So I started looking up parts about it and stuff and I actually found out they made a V8 model of it. So it kind of interests me and I was always into Pontiacs due to my father having a 1971 Pontiac GTO. So before picking up this Grand Prix, the main car I really wanted was a GTO or G8. I was looking around, a lot of them were out of the price range because I wanted to get a lower mileage one. I didn't want to get high mileage ones and have issues. So I was looking around, couldn't really find anything I wanted. And I actually found this one all the way down in Philadelphia and it had 52,000 miles at a Ford dealership. It was a trade-in from an older woman. So a test drove it, it was an amazing car, didn't have any issues and I got it. So before I get into what I've done to this car in the last four years, I wanna to explain to you guys that any of the stuff that I've put on this car, I'm gonna have the links below. So you guys check that out at the end of the video. So the first thing I did to this car was the exhaust system. I took a really cheap route in the beginning. I basically just cut the mufflers off and put some nice Flowmaster tips on the end. I do plan on getting a full cat back exhaust for the car this year possibly the next we'll see what happens on that the next thing i got for the car was suspension so what i have on it right now are coilovers from bc racing they're amazing they have great adjustability i basically have them maxed out right now to the bottom i think the fronts have about an inch and the back have an inch more that i can lower it but my subframe is already super low to the ground at the moment they're really easy to install into the car me and my friend leo put them on in about two or three hours so it wasn't too bad i think adding the suspension to the car really helped it have better steering and stuff it is very stiff when I'm driving like any bump I hit the car just like bounces all over the place it's a little obnoxious sometimes but it's pretty cool to just see people kind of stare at your car and be like why is that thing so low how the hell do you drive that thing and I really don't know how I drive it it's so low it, I can't even explain it. it might not look low in the front because I don't have like a front splitter or anything the frame is literally like an inch and a half two inches off the ground yeah it's it's really ridiculous so we're going on to wheels so my first set of wheels were the Odin LS 008s they were I think 18 by 9 with a positive 30 offset. They were monoblock wheels, they were cast like rep wheels. They made the car look really sick, very edgy, and they just like were very sharp looking. So the next set of wheels I actually purchased were three-piece wheels. If you don't know what three-piece wheels are, they're multi-piece wheels that have a lip, a barrel, and a face, basically connected together with a bunch of hardware. The reason why I went with these is they're a little bit stronger than a rep cast wheel. You can customize them the way you like it for by anodizing the bolts or the face or anything you really want to them. So at the moment, they're 19 by eight and a half with a positive 30 offset. This one are actually picked up a couple lips for the wheels. So it's gonna go from an inch and a half lip up to a three inch lip. And we're gonna see how that looks. Yeah, this winter, I think I'm gonna be changing the color of the faces. I might be doing a light gray. I'm not really sure what I'm doing yet. Or I might be doing a purple because this is like a, a black chrome purple build like colorway. So that's what I'm doing for that. Once I put the color on these wheels, you guys are gonna see it on the YouTube channel right here. So subscribe if you're new. But yeah, we're gonna have a ton of great content for this car. So on to the next thing that I did to this car were the headlight and taillights. So the front headlights are OEM Massive brand and the backs, I honestly have no idea what they are. They're from eBay, they're like 150 bucks and they're really hard to find because I didn't really like the clear look on the back headlights. I wanted to make it look OEM, but also add like a new age, like LED look. It's really insane how headlights and taillights can make a car look 10 years newer, especially this one. You look at the before and after of these headlights on it, it's like a huge facelift for this car. So some minor things I put on the car was I basically the front emblem, I just put like a, like a purple sticker to go over the red because it was like fading. And then the back, I took off the Grand Prix logo and I put an LS4 badge logo that I got off eBay. But for any of you Grand Prix guys, you guys know the trim pieces by the window suck. They, they break, they, they crack because of how old they are. So I basically put like a 3M camo wrap on it for at the moment. I think it makes it look a little different, looks cool. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it's better than looking at old like crusty trim pieces until I get new ones for it So I always have people ask me what I've done to the engine and it's stock. It 
it's bone stock. The only thing I added in the engine bay was like an oil cap that has Pontiac on it. And the braces, I have powder coated a cosmic purple. So another thing I added to the engine that I think all LS4 guys should put in their car if you don't already is a transmission cooler. It substantially helped the transmission. I was getting sometimes 250 degrees on the transmission temp in when I'm looking on the dash. And now that I put the transmission cooler in, it doesn't get over 200 and that's on like a 95 degree day driving for two hours going to a car show or something. So that's all I've done to the outside of the car. We're gonna talk about what I've done to the inside now. So the first thing I added to the interior of the car was a new head unit. It's from Pioneer. I forgot the number, but it's gonna be in the link below so you guys can check that out. The reason why I put that in is basically I could have Apple CarPlay, I could put my own music on, stuff like that. It's really cool if you guys didn't know, this came with Monsoon Audio from the factory. So it comes with a preamp in the back automatically. So the audio in the car sounds amazing for a 2007 with all the thumpy bass and stuff. And it doesn't even have a subwoofer. So the next thing I did to the car were a bunch of trim pieces that I got done in carbon fiber by my friend Eric at Carbon Freaks on Instagram. He does an amazing work on any maker model car and it's insane. His work is phenomenal. He has a great turnaround time. You guys can message him, see if he's available. I know he's super busy at the moment with a lot of orders, but you guys can obviously message him at any time. A couple of the interior pieces I got in carbon were the door trim pieces and the center console trim pieces and like the vent trim piece as well. So one more exterior piece I didn't talk about was the carbon fiber mirrors that he also did for me and they make the car look insane. I, I love the look of like carbon fiber on a black car and like you can't see it until you get really close up to it. Next thing I did to the interior was the headliner. Most of you Grand Prix guys know that the interiors only came in tan and I think it's disgusting especially having a black interior. So I basically took it out by myself and I basically used this fabric spray paint and it, I think it was from Dupla Color. It doesn't smell. I sprayed it. I put like I don't even know how many coats. Probably six to seven coats on it and it looks amazing. It looks like factory basically and it didn't stink or anything like that. I left it ventilate for like a week or two. So some of you guys on Instagram know about the other thing I did to the headliner that I love Rolls Royce Starlight headliners like so sick to me. So I basically did it to this car. So I had a couple other people ask me like how I routed the Starlight. So I basically ran the strands all the way down the C pillar on the passenger side into the back trunk. And if you if you own a Grand Prix, you know if you look underneath where like the amp is or where the preamp would be, there's a bunch of like holes where the speakers are. And I basically mounted it up in there. So it looks a nice flawless clean look. So that's basically what I've done to the interior. So after talking to you guys about what I've done to the car, I'm gonna explain to you guys some small issues I've had with the car. One of the issues I've had with the car was the active fuel management. Most of you guys know what that is. They even put it in cars nowadays. It's a horrible invention, I think. And maybe it was good on the on paper, but not now because the thing eats oil. I'm in the works of getting a DOD delete on it, so I don't have that issue anymore. So next issue that I had with this car, all you LS4 guys are gonna know what I'm talking about. You ready? It's the transmission. So. I didn't have an issue with the transmission for at least six months of ownership. Then a code popped up and my third gear started to slip. I'm in the works right now of possibly doing a 4T80 swap or I'm looking into just getting a really bulked up 4T65E. It sucks that it happens, but every LS4 has this issue. It's, this transmission sucks, especially when they really haven't modified it for this engine. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I appreciate you guys watching through all the way to the end. I have a lot of cool things coming with this car, a couple of friends' cars. If you guys know, I do photo and video work. So I'm gonna be posting behind the scenes of that stuff, my car features, car vents, all stuff like that. So if you guys have any comments, questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Peace.